Well, good afternoon now. Um, originally intended to, this to be broadcast in the morning, but uh, we've had some technical difficulties and uh, don't know what's going on. They say that the internet is slower and uh, that may be what's going on on Facebook. Um, may have been my computer, so I switched to my phone which may make this look a little different, but it appears to be working. Uh, but we're glad that uh, finally are able to broadcast and, and maybe share a little bit with you. Uh, hope you're doing well and, um, and and during this strange time that we're all um, facing. Um, I'm going to try this evening also to, to broadcast a, a little evening devotional for you a lesson. Uh, we'll see how that works. I'll probably be from a different location, but um, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I hope you're having a good Lord's Day and um, enjoying time with family in your home. Why don't we pray a moment and then we will uh, get into our lesson for today from 2 Timothy chapter 1. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Uh, thank you for making this uh, possible where we can communicate even uh, when we're not face to face and we pray that we've been able to praise you today and and think about your love for us and help us to to be reminded now father that you have given us a spirit of power and help us take advantage of that and live powerful lives before you thank you for your love in jesus we pray in his name amen uh, back in the, the prime of her career, the advice columnist, Ann Landers, famous advice columnist, she, it is said, received a, an average of 10,000 letters a month, nearly all of them from people with problems. Uh, she was asked one time if there was one predominant theme in the letter she received, and she said this, the one problem above all others seems to be fear. People are afraid of losing their health, their wealth, and their loved ones. People are afraid of life itself. That's what she said. And uh, she was probably right and probably still is. And we're really not immune to that as Christians. Uh, we should be, but we're not. And until we're perfected, uh, we're not immune from that. You remember what was said by John in his first letter in the New Testament? Um, first John, you know, first John is often referred to as the great love letter of the Bible. And the apostle certainly talks a lot about love and the nature of love in that first letter. Well, in uh, chapter four of first John, verse 17, he writes this. He says, by this is love perfected. Now, he had just been talking about the fact in the previous verse, verse 16, that God is love and that God loves us. But he says, by this is love perfected with us, verse 17, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. And then in verse 18, he says this, there is no fear in love, but perfect love fills away with um, in the life of a faithful and mature Christian. We do not operate from fear. We don't make decisions based on fear. Fear does not control us. I want you to picture this uh, man named Eric Valley. He was a professional photographer. He's dangling from a nylon rope from a 400-foot cliff in the Himalayas. A nearby him on a rope ladder is another man, a man named Mani Lal, and he's doing what he has done for decades, that is hunting honey. And here in these mountains, uh, the cliffs shelter honeycombs that belong to the world's largest honeybee. Well, at the moment, thousands of these bees are buzzing around both men. 
And Lal, who is a veteran of doing this and, and a veteran of, of hundreds of honeybee attacks, he's very calm. Not so Mr. Valley. He later described the moment in, in National Geographic. Uh, he said, there were so many bees, I was afraid I might freak out. But I knew if I did, I would be dead. So I took a deep breath and relaxed. Getting stung, I realized, would be better than finding myself at the bottom of the cliff. And so he was able to overcome his fears. And he actually won a photo competition for his efforts. Well, fear, uh, speaking more spiritually now, can, can send us plummeting to destruction. And, and some believers facing, uh, the, maybe fearing the, 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 the stings of persecution or ridicule or maybe having their comfort zone disturbed, are tempted to, to compromise their faith and slip loose from the lifeline of Christ, which is why the Bible teaches us to fear God only. So, yes, there is good fear and bad fear. It's good to fear God, and we mean by that to respect him, to obey him. Uh, but we're sort of talking about this bad fear today, not good fear. Uh, fear in the life of a Christian can really hamper growth. In fact, it can kill it, both uh, individual growth and church growth. And so I wanted us to look at a little case study of this for a couple of minutes. Uh, it involves a relationship in the New Testament. It's the relationship of the Apostle Paul and a younger preacher at the time whose name was Timothy. Paul wrote a couple of letters to Timothy. Timothy was his child in the faith, and he was trying to encourage him. He was, he was trying to build him up in his ministry with the church. Timothy seemed to be working with the church in the region of Ephesus. Uh, Paul knew a lot about Timothy. Uh, if you read uh, chapter 1 of 2 Timothy, we'll read a verse there in a minute. But if you read that whole chapter, we see uh, Paul was very close to him, and uh, he talks about the fact that he prays for Timothy constantly, night and day, he says in 2 Timothy 1, verse 3. He refers to tears that Timothy had shed on some past occasion, perhaps when they had been forced to part at some point, uh, maybe when Paul was arrested. We don't really know the situation, but Timothy had shed tears. He, he recalls Timothy's faith, especially where it came from. Uh, it had come from his mother and from his grandmother. Uh, verse 5 of that, that same chapter. And then let's hear these two verses that follow this, verses 6 and 7. Of, of 2 Timothy 1. It says there, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So in his direct but gentle way, What's Paul saying to Timothy? Now, apparently, Timothy is struggling. He's struggling with fear, and this fear is hampering his work, his ministry. Uh, there's been all kinds of speculation based on this passage that um, maybe Timothy was a bit of a weakling, uh, that he tended to be a, perhaps a scaredy cat. Now, I don't know about that. Um, it's a big assertion to, to build off of just a couple of passages. But what we do know is this. At the moment when Paul wrote this, Timothy was struggling with fear. The word that's used here means something like timidity or uh, cowardice. And it was used sometimes in that world to describe cowardice in battle. Uh, 
It's used elsewhere in the New Testament. The noun form of the word is used to describe the disciples of Jesus when they were on the boat in Galilee. Remember the storm came up and they sort of go into a panic and they call for Jesus and and Jesus comes and he stills the storm. And then it says he rebuked them for their fear. Uh, The noun is also used in the book of Revelation in uh, chapter 21. There's a list in that chapter, Revelation 21, that uh, no one ever wants to be a part of. It's the list of those who will be condemned in the lake of fire in the language of that chapter. You remember that list that's made there? Who's included in that list? Well, you have sorcerers and idolaters and liars, and uh, you have murderers, and the sexually immoral, and it says also faithless and detestable people. But do you know what is at the head of that list, the first thing in that list of those who will be condemned? The cowardly, the fearful, and it's this very same word. So, you know, this was no doubt a real problem for Timothy, or Paul would have never addressed it. Timothy struggled with fear, as many Christians after him would, and as many still do. Uh, some just live their lives in, in fear. Some Christians live their lives afraid. Now, what was it that Timothy was afraid of? We're not sure about that. Maybe it was his work, uh, being out on his own now on the mission field, not being with Paul, much more experienced and probably bold Paul. We don't know what it was that was ginning up this fear in Timothy's life. We just know that, that it was a problem. And it always is for a Christian when they experience it. You see, Timothy had been given a gift, a gift for ministry, And really, all Christians are given gifts uh, such as this. We all receive the gift of the Holy Spirit at our baptism. Uh, But it's true that Timothy may well have received additional gifts, maybe even a supernatural gift of the Spirit, because we know that the Apostle Paul had laid his hands on him. Paul refers to that here the gift that had been given him through the laying on of the hands of the apostle. But does that not point out all the more uh, the great danger of of fear in the life of a Christian? You see, if fear could squelch a miraculous gift of the Spirit in the life of a person like Timothy, what about those of us who don't have a supernatural gift? What could fear do to us in our work, in our Christian walk? It really could be devastating, couldn't it? I have known of Christians, uh, people uh, quite advanced in, in years in their faith, who should have known better, who, who were still not quite sure that they were going to heaven. They, they feared judgment. Now again, these were people that had been believers for a long time. It's sort of pitiful. I really don't know what else to call it. You know, if you're a, a Christian today and you have any doubt whatsoever about your eternal destiny, there's a major problem. Uh, Jesus didn't die on a cross for our sins for us to have doubts about whether he could save us or not. That that fear, if it's there, needs to be cast out, needs to be stamped out in our lives. There are, are Christians who struggle with living out their lives as believers in this world. So they might have fear of ridicule or persecution. Uh, maybe they fear being different. They fear standing out among their peers. They'd rather fit in. Uh, 
Um, they would rather someone else carry their cross. Uh, maybe they would be called anonymous Christians. No one would ever know that their king was Jesus by the way they lived. And again, obviously, if we have that kind of fear, we need to eliminate that from our lives. Uh, it'll prevent us from being effective for Christ. A lot of Christians fear telling others of their faith, telling others about Jesus, uh, a fear to tell others good news. This may have been, if I had to guess, this may have been the kind of fear that Timothy was struggling with. Um, he was a missionary evangelist, and yet he may have struggled with this kind of fear. And, and all of us really need to battle against that and, and to stamp it out if that's something that, that we experience, our fear to tell others the good news. And then sometimes Christians are just afraid of anything different, you know, of any change, anything that might take them outside of their zone of comfort. Um, fear is something that can, that can kill the progress of a kingdom. Uh, there are some Christians that I've known that, that could be described like the Missouri farmer described his mule. He said, that mule is awfully backward about going forward. So that's a fear as well that, that needs to be dealt with. If we're to be the people in the church that God wants us to be, we need to deal with that. But I really want us to, to finish in a positive vein today uh, because Paul tells Timothy the solution to all this here in this passage. He tells him how he's supposed to live instead of the way he's living at the moment. Instead of being paralyzed by fear, he says, Timothy, I want you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you. Fan into flame the gift of God. Now again, each one of us has a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, first of all. And, and then all those good things that he can bring into our lives, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, which are given to us to, to help us to do ministry and to serve others. So if you're struggling with fear, remember your gifts and, and fan them, fan them into flame. That is, get them active again, get involved in real ministry and service. Uh, serve God in a positive way. That's how we fan into flame the gift of God. And then Paul reminds Timothy of what the Christian's life is supposed to look like in verse 7 of the passage. Not fearful, but full of power. We've been given a spirit of power and also of love and self-control, as he writes. So when you chase out fear, then the Spirit goes to work in your life, and you begin to live a powerful life for God. You are free to really love people. Um, after all, you're not afraid of them anymore. And then, of course, the Spirit works in us to, to make us more holy, as, as he sanctifies us, as he produces his fruit in our lives. You know the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's really what our lives should be should be full of. That, that ought to be the, the fruit that is seen when people look at us. That's what we ought to look like. So as we close, I want, I want you to notice just one more phrase in this text. It's in verse 8. It says, therefore, always an important signpost in a Bible passage. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. A fear can make you afraid 
to do the number one job of a Christian. That is to bear, bear witness to Jesus and to the gospel. And, you know, we sometimes wonder why the, the church struggles in her mission in the world. One of the big causes is fear. And so let's stamp it out. And uh, let's fan into flame the gift of God. Let's remember that we are to live lives of power and love and self-control. Uh, I'm thinking that this time that, that we're in right now maybe is training ground to remind us of these very things. I mean, there's some things we're legitimately afraid of right now. Uh, the, the virus that's going around and so forth. But maybe this is training time where we're reminded of where our true source of power comes and uh, we can fan into flame the gift of God in us and recall that, that we are to live lives of power. Um, this passage certainly reminds us of, of that and teaches us these truths. I hope you'll reflect on that some more and, uh, and be encouraged by it. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, for listening and studying along. Again, uh, this evening, I may try and post another uh, devotional message for you uh, just to encourage you and to build you up. Uh, the one I'm thinking about doing is uh, is a lesson on, another lesson on David. Um, and it, I was reminded of it because uh, it's getting to be time for the census. You know, you've probably received cards in the mail or maybe emails reminding you to, to fill out your census form. Uh, David was involved in a census once. It was a senseless census. And um, I think it might be an interesting lesson for you uh, to be a part of. A little bit later in the day or maybe look uh, tonight on online and see if it's been posted. Hopefully things will work and we'll be able to do that. God bless you. Um, looking forward so much to the next time we can get together face to face. We hope it's soon, um, but we pray you're well. Take care.